It's hard to think about azaleas or any other flowering plant during March and April in Wilmington without New Hanover County's Airly Gardens coming to mind. Even the very name, Airly, evokes the pleasure of gentle breezes coursing through moss-hung stands of live oak and cedar, set off by the gloriously audacious blooms of spring. Originally a place of retreat and repose for some of Wilmington's leading families, the pure coastal air in what was once described as a happy, beautiful, magical place was said at the time to have been a healthful tonic for the many ails of city life. The first recorded owner of the land that would become Airely was in fact King George II. In time, a family named Wright purchased the tract. By 1886, it was known as Seaside Park and was sold in that year for $1,250 to a wealthy young woman named Sarah Green Jones. The tract was renamed Airely in honor of her husband's ancestral Scottish home. When Pembroke Jones passed away in 1919, Sarah married a longtime family friend, Henry Walters, and stayed on in her rambling old mansion at Airely in season for the fresh air of rightsful sound and for her flowers. Albert Corbett, whose family owned Airely from 1948 to 1999. It was an escape. It was a, a place of serenity where people could come and uh, find a little peace and quiet. Uh, among all the hubbub of a big bustling uh, town that was, was growing with commerce. It, it was just a, an escape, and a, uh, particularly on weekends, that families could come and relate to each other and just experience nature and uh, its beauty. In the early days, it was mainly uh, camellias and azaleas and the lake, and a lot of the uh, the columns and the pergola is as you're, as you're seeing, seeing right now. The gardens we see today grew from lavish plantings by Sarah Jones, beginning in about 1901. Sarah preferred to improve on nature's perfection, as it were, by gently directing nature toward completion of her vision, which included a landscape of glimpses and surprises. Coming down the drive toward the house was said to have been an enchanting experience, with a view of the lake here, a brilliant grouping of azaleas there. Hardly a straight line marred Sarah's garden, which simply flowed without seeming contrived. The large plantings you're seeing here are the large famosa of azalea, which uh, comprise quite a bit of the uh, plantings, particularly around the lake. And you're really seeing two plants to every one because of the reflection along the edge of the lake. Many of the staff tasked with keeping Sarah's place up were descendants of slaves, people who were loved, appreciated, and often admired by their employers. During the late 1940s, Minnie Evans, a former housekeeper for the Joneses, became Airlie's beloved gatekeeper. She also became, about that time, an astonishingly adept painter, whose work is much sought after today. As a testament to Minnie's colorful creativity, local artist Virginia Wright Frierson created this whimsical bottle chapel in Airlie's Minnie Evans Sculpture Garden. In 1948, when the estate was purchased by the Corbett family for an astonishing $150,000, Waddell A. and Bertha Barefoot Corbett became the proud new owners of a huge swath of priceless botanical wonderland, and a great swath of a house, too, that was so big even professional photographers were said to have had a hard time fitting its image into their lenses. There were 33 rooms and 11 full baths. By the time the Corbett's grandchildren were enjoying Airely in the mid-50s, the family had dismantled the old mansion and built their own home. And that's where their grandson, Albert, 
along with his sisters and many cousins congregated. Yes, what I appreciate most down here was what it meant to our family and was a gift that uh, just almost beyond words to explain what, what, it really, what it really meant for us. It's just indescribable. And that was a big part of the reason uh, that my grandparents purchased Airlie was to bring our family together, and it, it certainly did that. We kids, when we would get down here, uh, we would all gather and determine where we were going, and, but before I would leave, I can still remember my mother saying, now one place to stay away from is the lake. And so where do you think the first place that we would go? The Corbett family sold Airlie to New Hanover County in January of 1999. We, the owners, wanted everyone to be able to experience this as we had and it to be their garden. The decision was made that Airlie should belong to, to everyone. It should be a place where they could experience what I had the, the pleasure and good fortune to experience. And I believe, and with all my heart, that it will be that in, in the years to come.